Mitch Wadhanasan is um, the chief architect that we have for a Recover I2B2 data set. So Recover is a project that the federal government has funded to um, study long COVID, um, which uh, many of you who were here yesterday heard you know, a lot about. But this project um, has really, from a, the point of view of data, done things that were only dreamed about before this project, and that it has a cohort of patients who get data collected um, directly from the patient in REDCap or entered by the research assistants. They have EHR data uh, that's collected. They have uh, mobile health data or digital health data that's being collected. They have imaging data that's being collected. And all this data has to be harmonized and put together for real. And you hear it talked about a lot, but you don't actually see it done. And so Niche has been the one behind building the architecture out in I2B2 to actually get all that to work. And so, Mitch. And, and I should say, that of course, there's a large team of others, which I think is very good for him to have put in all the slides. And that's, uh, anyway. Thanks, so much. It's going to be uh, really hard to follow all those great AI uh, presentations. So I'm going to bring it back down. I might let some of you down with uh, back to human intelligence. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to be talking about just um, essentially what Sean said, data integration for the Recover project, which is uh, researching COVID to enhance recovery. So as um, some of you heard yesterday at the long COVID conference, but also this is a, just from an advisor from President Biden. Um, that post pandemic, uh, we will be left with tens of millions of people with chronic disease, and this will overshadow the enormous losses due to acute COVID. So uh, back in January of 2021, uh, Dr. Francis Collins, the uh, former director of the NIH, um, produced this blog post to start talking about long COVID. And essentially a few months later, a, um, a set of awards were made um, for the, this recover project. And at the bottom, you can see that um, Mass General Brigham won one of those awards uh, for the data resource, resource core. And I'll actually explain what that is. So the recover initiative you can see is made up of a, these um, several cores, these three cores at, at the top, um, the clinical science core at NYU, uh, the data resource core at MGB, and the biorepository core um, at the Mayo Clinic. And of course, this, there's, there's many national sites involved and an administrative coordinating center. So at the clinical science core, uh, they're uh, responsible for essentially designing what the, the uh, studies are about, what the protocols for recover are, um, working directly with the participating sites. Um, but for the data resource core, what we're responsible for is essentially uh, taking all of the data. So um, collecting all of the data from, from participants, but also making that data uh, usable. And the, uh, the co-PIs of, of, of this uh, data resource core is um, Andrea Folks, uh, of course, Sean Murphy, and Beth Carlson. So RECOVER is essentially an observational study. There's three distinct protocols, um, including participants um, in, for adults, uh, decedents for autopsies, and, uh, and of course, participants for pediatrics. Uh, the goal is to recruit um, over 50,000 participants in various uh, statuses, acute, post-acute, uninfected, um, across over 250 uh, sites in the country. But I really want to focus on, on, on this last point, really, is that um, there's kind of multiple complex data that need to be integrated and made usable somehow. So that was kind of the goal that we set out. And we... Um, found that this could be done by building a centralized I2B2. And I can get, I'll get 
way into uh, much more detail on that. Uh, there's three aims of this of, of the recover main protocol. I'm, I'm not going to get into too much detail about this. Um, essentially, it's defining what uh, PASC and long COVID is, uh, are, um, determining associated risk factors, and, and, and ultimately finding direct and indirect causal effects of, of COVID. Uh, but uh, if you're interested, you can see those aims. You can see a lot more information in, in the official website, uh, recovercovid.org. Okay. So as I mentioned, for the data resource core, we essentially have these um, on the left-hand side, uh, a selection of data sources that, that are flowing in. So uh, at the top, you can see there's acute and post-acute COVID, um, uh, essentially study data. This is the observ observational data that comes from participants um, via REDCap. There is biospecimen data. So these, this is data about samples collected on those patients. Uh, participants who want to uh, consent to sending their EHR data via, you know, like their mobile app, um, they can do so. Um, there's mobile and digital health data platform. So this is like uh, participants who want to receive a free Fitbit. You can actually get a Fitbit, wear it, and then that sensor data is collected and then also flows through the same system. And then of course, other um, past related studies. So the kind of the simple idea here is that if we can get all of these different types of data sources into one common format, the I2B2 format that everyone here knows, uh, we can essentially build a what we're calling a core I2B2 data index. So uh, we're hosting a centralized I2B2 where we can put all of that data in. Um, all of the uh, boxes that you see in that centralized I2B2 are just functions that, that I think most are familiar with that uh, when you operationalize an I2B2 instance, you, just, you have to consider uh, you know, the ETL process, the frequency of updates, how those things are, are, are done, uh, uh, patient identifier management, um, ontology management, which, which I'll get more into detail later, and then payload and provenance, and of course, being able to host a query tool uh, to be able to build out patient cohorts for feasibility analysis. And ultimately, um, what we're already doing today is from that centralized I2B2, we are creating and exporting data sets on a regular basis um, for investigators in the Recover Consortium to be able to use. Uh, Basically, these data sets are exported to a secure environment um, in which researchers can use workspaces that um, have these analytical tools already provided for them, Jupyter, R, SAS, and, and so forth. So I'm going to just kind of briefly go through one by one of these data sources um, to highlight uh, kind of what's going on in, in, in each one. So here is the REDCap. Uh, we were hosting a REDCap Central, of course, to be able to collect those uh, survey data from the participants in the project. Uh, and essentially, we have to uh, do a REDCap to I2B2 data transformation, right? How do we get that REDCap data transformed into I2B2? And this is work that's been done, um, I, I think, many times over the years. We've seen presentations about it. Uh, but I do want to highlight that uh, we built a uh, more, actually Victor built, so I just want to just, he's sitting over there. So so uh, I attribute this work to Victor Castro, uh, Rita Mehta, Barbara uh, Benoit, and, and, and the team, uh, a little bit more robust uh, pipeline that uh, processes the red cap data into I2B2. Oh yeah. So you're going to see a bunch of red text. I'm going to shout out a bunch of people uh, uh, and highlight that there's the data model interoperability panel later in the afternoon that Victor will be um, taking a much more deeper dive into you know, how essentially I2P2 and REDCap can work together. And so you can actually leave all the hard questions to, uh, <laughs> to Victor later on. Uh, there's biospecimen data. 
Um, so the Mayo Clinic, as you saw on that other slide, uh, they are the PASC bio repository core. And essentially they send us sample information. They send us the sample data in an inventory uh, of samples that are available um, for participating uh, patients. And uh, we have to uh, essentially get that into ITB2 format. We work with the Mayo team and just wanted to credit uh, Andy Kagan and Pete Swenson of, of the Mayo Clinic that um, of their work. Um, as I mentioned for EHR and, and uh, essentially in, in fire data format. So uh, participants as part of the mobile health platform can install a mobile app on their iPhone or Android phone, and then essentially click a button. So very similar to like, you know, the pharmacy apps that you see, you can actually uh, export and pull e your EHR data um, from your health portals uh, and send it to uh, for this project. And essentially it flows through a company called Care Evolution who works with us as part of the mobile health platform. It comes in as fire data, it's transformed into OMOP data. And then that OMOP data is uh, essentially presented in ITV2. Yep, another shout out to uh, Jeff Klan. I think, uh, yeah, there's Jeff. Uh, He'll be talking about IGB2 on OMOP. So we actually used all of his work on um, essentially uh, presenting views on top of OMOP tables that can present you know, that OMOP data as IGB2. Sensor data is, is, is also have to be transformed into IGB2 format uh, and ontology has to be designed. This, this work was led is currently being led by Griffin Weber and, and Andrew Kagan and, and the team. And then there's other uh, past related uh, study data, uh, extant cohort data that, that flows through REDCap and comes in from C4R, ABCD, music, and, and so forth. Okay, finally wanted to get to this slide. Uh, so this is kind of, I, I couldn't do a live demo really in, in, in time allotted, but I wanted to show this is actually what um, our recover ITB2 query tool looks like. Um, and this is kind of the secret sauce, right? Is that um, we have an ontology uh, driven normalization of source data. So if we can build a cohesive metadata tree on the left hand side of, you know, in, in ITB2, uh, we can essentially combine all of this data together um, in, in, in a queryable way. And so this is just kind of recapping the different tree nodes that you see in the ontology here for adult red cap, autopsies, um, biospecimen data. Uh, th this one I actually haven't mentioned yet, but uh, a shout out to M Michelle Morris. Um, this is actually all of her work. So for the EHR data for OMOP, uh, we needed an ontology that could uh, represent uh, diagnosis and medications for the, for the EHR data that we're receiving. And uh, Michelle has worked extensively on a enact OMOP ITB2 uh, metadata for that. So we actually grabbed that, the latest and greatest stuff, and um, we put it in here. Uh, and sensor data, which is coming soon, is not, not featured here. So this query tool probably looks a little bit different from the, from the um, kind of current query tool. Uh, Shout out to 2.30 and to 3 o'clock, there's a uh, see what's new in ITV2 uh, overview of the new release. So this is what the new web client looks like. It's a little bit reskinned for Recover, but um, we worked uh, very closely with uh, Diane, Mark, uh, Nick Benick, Anupama, and, 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 and their team at Harvard Medical School to be able to get the latest and greatest uh, web client um, and designed in a secure way. Uh, so these these last couple slides are really just to show what the tree looks like. So this is um, yeah, okay, a little hard to read, but uh, this is just a kind of rep a representation of what the um, adult REDCap metadata looks like after we've transformed it from REDCap into ITB2. Uh, as you probably know, with ontology de design, it's kind of like an art, there's really no wrong way to design. There's many different ways to design an ontology. So, and so um, this is a way that uh, works for us, that one way you can, you know, for investigators can query questions um, and, and their answers to find um, the respective participants. 
this is what the biospecimens metadata looks like. So um, here you can see for adults, uh, these are all the samples collected um, in the project, nasal swabs, PBMCs, plasma, and, and so forth. But uh, what, what's interesting here, uh, the, the, the blue tags in the tree are, we're using modifiers. So um, not only can you query you know, just, just the sample type, but you can query uh, like collection time to freeze time in hours or months since index date um, for collection. No, I have a couple minutes left. Three minutes, okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, and uh, this is really neat. So we, as part of this work, we developed in-house a new vocabulary development tool. Um, basically, it's, it's, it's an ITV2. It's called the Ontology Browser. And we essentially use this tool for ourselves to be able to, it, it's, a, it's kind of a point and click UI way to sketch out uh, and develop ontologies or you know the metadata tree in ITB2. So essentially uh, it's it's a it's a UI way to you can create new terms, folders, you can edit, hide any terms existing in, in, in the tree, and you can even move and duplicate parts of trees. So you can you, you can take like part of a tree and then you can copy and paste it somewhere else. So this is a tool that we hope to be able to release open source to the community soon. Uh, it only works in SQL Server right now. So in closing, really, uh, you know, we uh, essentially, we can augment the data to make it more usable. So in addition to just the observational data that comes in from the participants in REDCap, we can add EHR data, for example, it can help with missing data that, that's in the ECRFs, um, lab values, core morbidities, uh, COVID treatment medications. These are things that, that we might not necessarily get right from uh, survey data. Uh, there's other sensor data like Fitbit data that we can uh, digest into specific queryable events um, when we put it into ITV2. And uh, of course, like EHR data has retrospective value when you combine it with, with other data. So we can uh, further use it for chart review and validation um, as, as Sean and Griffin mentioned in, in the previous talk. And ultimately, um, you know, harmonized data can be used as an index. So the whole purpose of building this centralized I2B2 for recover was to answer the question kind of what data do we have? Right, we collect so much data from so many places, uh, and and we want to be able to answer the question, you know, what what data do we collect? So we built this index that essentially contains pointers to other types of data, right? So all the raw data for the sensor data is is lives in the mobile health data repository. So from our index, we can say this data exists, and we can point it to a different area where investigators later on can actually fetch the raw data. And of course, there's a huge team uh, uh, that works on this uh, in the data resource core. This is not an exhaustive uh, uh, list by any means, but uh, you know we're led by the people on the right hand side, <laughs> faculty leadership, and of course on the left, uh, the left hand side, um, the pro project leadership. Um, so Vivian Gaynor here, she's the program manager of of the data resource core, and and she has been essential for the success of this project uh, so far. Thank you so much. I think it's coffee time. Yeah, yeah, let's break. Let's break. Oh, no, let's not break. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Quick question now. Uh, the the ontology editing new function looks very appealing, uh, but I, I wonder a lot of time ontology is urgent to encourage um, normalization, but now you give people a chance to diverge. So what's the um, incentives or what the use cases you imagine people can benefit now? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So we actually set out not just to make like kind of an editing tool, but we set out to make a collaboration tool. 
And so the thought was, as we worked on this, on as we worked on the development of these various ontologies, we actually put them up on this tool. And there's a feature that I really skipped over that allows you to annotate. So um, people can actually come in, development, the developers of that ontology can come in and then kind of annotate just various parts of the tree. And then you can easily find that, that you know, comments that people have left. So that, so we kind of also envision it besides just editing as a collaboration tool to be able to, uh, you know, build out uh, these ontologies, um, you know, across teams. Yeah, cool. I, I think it'd be nice to add, um, other than navigating and browsing, if you have a version control and somehow to show the depth of the trees, in, I know it's a hard work, but uh, it's good to have. Yeah, yeah, that, that is a great point. Um, so there, there's like a minor feature that we put in so far that at least you can, so, so everything is, tra all changes are tracked. So we tried to be able to reproduce. So the next version of ontology, we can at least reproduce those changes, but it's a, it's, it is a difficult issue. Thank you. Thank you so much.